What's up guys, how you all doing? So, it was a busy night last night. I kind of did the video where I said I might uh, try and put a Hackintosh uh, on the gaming PC and five minutes after I put the uh, phone down on the vlog, I actually did it. So, let me just talk you through the process. Now, the first thing is that this would change considerably if you didn't have hardware that was just literally natively uh, supported. So, if you're gonna build yourself a Hackintosh, then the first thing you've got to make sure you do is get all of the supported hardware, everything, because otherwise you're going to start having to manually install kexts and all kinds of uh, horrible things, if you can even find one for it. So luckily, this uh, motherboard that I've got here, uh, and pretty much everything in the box, was just literally fully supported, almost out of the box from Mavericks itself. Had to install um, a couple of kexts, but we'll come on to that in a second. So um, basically the process was this. You download Mavericks onto an existing Mac, and it has to be in the slash applications uh, folder. Then you download Unibeast from Tony Mac's uh, website, and you basically just run that, and uh, it automatically detects your Mavericks installation, and then puts that Unibeast plus Mavericks onto a USB stick that you need to have uh, formally uh, formatted. So that creates your Unibeast installation. So that's a collaboration of Unibeast and the Mavericks installation media. Then what you do is you just basically go over to your computer, put in the USB stick and it boots up from uh, the Unibeast install and then starts to install uh, Mavericks onto your machine. Once that's done, you then download Multibeast from uh, Tony Mac website and then you run that, you choose the extra text that you need and bang, that's it, you literally, away you go. Uh, I, I had a couple of complications um, with the bootloader, but someone on Twitter pointed me to an article on a website, and I basically just had to uh, tick a couple of boxes on Multibeast, uh, sorry, on Chimera, and bang, it all kind of sprung into life. So as you can see now, and as most of you will have seen from Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, you best be following me on all of them, um, <laughs> I've now got it uh, completely up and running, and everything's working perfectly. Um, Bluetooth is working, uh, hasn't got Wi-Fi in it, so I don't use Wi-Fi anyway, I've got uh, gigabit LAN. Uh, the gigabit NIC is working, uh, sound is working, you can see the screen resolution, it's picked up both the uh, ATI uh, graphics cards, so I could essentially use it over here, because each one's got three ports, so I need six, so I could actually use it here. Um, so uh, it picked up all of that stuff, uh, 32 gig of RAM, it picked up everything absolutely perfectly, no problems whatsoever. And as you can see, uh, it is at working literally perfectly. So that was cool. Um, and that's it, that's literally all you do. It's very, very simple. Now the second thing that I'm going to talk you through is setting up a cluster. And I should really do some more detailed videos on this. If you want me to kind of really put it step by step, uh, then let me know in the comments and maybe I'll do that. But this clustered rendering, people have been asking me endless amounts of questions about it. Basically what it does is it creates like a grid system. So let me put it simpler than that. Basically what it does is it sort of sets up a listener uh, on the on the, like a number of hosts, uh, sorry, a number of targets if you like. Um, and then you have like a, a controller, which is your main machine. And then when you render something, you basically send it to the cluster and it sends different parts out to all the different machines. They all render their bit and then they send it back to the middle, put it back together again and you've got your file. So I've been doing it for quite a while with the MacBook Pro. But now I've been doing it with the MacBook Pro and uh, the uh, Hackintosh and my Mac Pro. So essentially I've got four cores, four cores, four cores. So that's 12 cores. Yeah, 12 cores, um, all acting as essentially like one machine. So rendering a file is just going lightning fast, like absolutely lightning fast. One thing to bear in mind when you're doing this, you've got to do it uh, on, essent well, preferably gigabit LAN, at least 100 megabit LAN. Don't try and do this over Wi-Fi, because it has to send these huge files all over the place. I mean, if you're only doing 1080p or 720p, you could potentially get away with it. But with the 4K files, and they start off raw like 80 gig, it has to copy bits of that around. So there'd be no point doing that over uh, Wi-Fi. So let me uh, quickly give you a bit of information about how that actually pans out. So what happens is, um, once you've, like, let me talk you through it. The original file uh, for, for my 4K uh, was about 80 gigs. So I did a little test, 80 gigs. Um, I then put that through compressor, 
um, and it came out at 2.5 gigs uh, in H.264. No, sorry, I put it through Final Cut Pro, and it came out uh, at 2.5 gigs on H.264. I sent it off to compressor on the highest possible uh, quality that you can choose uh, for both audio and video, and it came back at less than 500 meg, and the quality was better than the output of that from uh, Final Cut Pro. Plus, it was quicker because I used the uh, clustered rendering. So that all worked out pretty well, and it's so cool because basically what happens is you kick off the job, and then you, you look at the, um, the share monitor, uh, on each machine and you look at like activity monitor to see the processes and all of a sudden you see bang loads of processes go up to like a uh, hundred percent each and it just starts rendering so it's pretty cool like I say if you want me to go into more detail about it then maybe I could do like a sort of screen uh, recording thing and show you exactly what's happening and how to do it but uh, this was just a quick walk through and to let you know that I am also going to see The Hobbit uh, this evening as well that I'm really excited about and after that I'm going to meet the guys that I queued with for the iPad uh, and the iPhone 5s at Blue Water at Blue Water and we're all going to go off and uh, have a Nando so a pretty cool night for me uh, very very pleased with uh, the uh, hacking tosh it's, it seems to be working uh, pretty flawlessly to be honest um, the, the gigabit nick has sometimes given a couple of little weird problems but I seem to have ironed that out so um, it was a bit of messing around, but the actual initial install is pretty much uh, straightforward. This rendering, uh, clustered rendering, having another um, to uh, host to, to, to host the rendering really does help me out with the 4K video, especially while we haven't got uh, the new Mac Pro. And yeah, it's all pretty decent. The next thing I want to do is just put Windows 8 back on uh, the gaming machine as a dual boot. So I'm not quite sure how you do that. You guys, maybe you can let me know. Uh, does Chimera need to be the bootloader or would you just let Windows take over? I'm not sure. Uh, let me know anyway, guys, if you know how to do that. Have yourselves an absolutely uh, fantastic weekend if I don't uh, catch up with you before then. It is Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Uh, things are looking up for the weekend. And uh, I will see you all in the next one. Peace.